Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about blob assets. Wait, 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 wait. Don't click off just yet. I promise it is a useful feature of Unity's entity component system. And so the idea behind blob assets is to give a central storage location to immutable data in our game. So this is data that's not going to be changing throughout the duration of our application as opposed to dynamic data, which is kind of what I went over in the previous video where I talked about dynamic buffers. So once again, blob assets are a way that we can store, say, an array of data that any of our entities in our scene can basically reference and use that as a single store of data to point to. So in today's video, I'm basically going to be talking a little bit about um, these blob assets, when to use them, how to use them, and I'm actually going to show you how to use them in the tutorial section of the video where I'm gonna be showing you how to use blob assets to create essentially an experience leveling system where we can keep track of the experience requirement for each level. And then once that experience requirement is reached, then we can display to the player that they are on the next level and then change some characteristics about their player. So anyways, if you do find today's video helpful and you learned a thing or two, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and their data oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below or come join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev slash Discord. So for starters, what are blob assets? Kind of like I mentioned before, they're basically a way that we can store immutable data about our game. So if there's um, you know, some certain characteristics or points of interest maybe that we want to keep track of that are not going to be changing throughout the duration of our application, but we always want to reference that from many different places on our application, we can save that data inside a single blob asset and just have that nice central location that we can point uh, everything back to. Now, blob assets are not components because they're not actually associated with a single entity. They're just kind of like a store in memory. What we end up doing is we create blob asset references, and then those blob asset references are basically how we can access um, that blob asset data from our different entities in our game. Now, these blob asset references are thread safe because these blob assets are essentially read only. Um, we actually cannot modify these blob assets when we, once we create them. Um, if we do want to make any modifications to them, we basically have to generate a brand new uh, blob asset store, make any of the changes that we want to, and then we would have to update any of our references to the existing blob asset store. Now, very similar to basically everything else in ECS is going to be subject to kind of the standard limitations of data components. So basically we can only have primitive types, uh, strings, structs, arrays, and arrays of arrays. And now just keep in mind that these structs and arrays or even arrays of arrays must contain only blittable types as well. Um, if you are using strings, which we will be using strings in the tutorial section of this video, they must be of type blob string or fixed string. Now I couldn't actually get the blob string to work properly. Um, maybe just need to do a little bit of research into how exactly to use that, but I was able to use fixed string no problem, and that's what I'm gonna be showing you how to use today. So when would you want to use these blob assets to store data in your game? Again, this is gonna be you know any data that's not changing in your game. I know CodeMonkey did a few tutorials um, over on his YouTube channel, which I would recommend checking out if you do want some more information on them. I will leave some links in the description so you can um, watch those after this video, of course. But he was showing how you can basically have maybe some certain points in your world that are never going to be changing that all of your objects could reference and you can kind of like cycle through moving towards each of those points. Or I think he even did a video where he stored some animation data in these blob asset stores and was able to just kind of do some simple sprite animation using them. And kind of like I hinted at earlier, the tutorial that I'm basically going to be showing you how to do today is we're going to be creating a little bit of a leveling system. So um, basically in our game, when it's kind of like a turn-based style JRPG type game. And basically what happens is when we defeat one of the enemies, then it's going to give us some certain number of experience points. And once we have the maximum experience points for that level, which we're going to be referencing the blob asset to see what is the maximum experience points for that level, um, then we will level up to the next level. And then using the data stored on the blob asset, we're going to be able to update the title of the player. And then we're going to you know, update the reference for how many experience points to get to the next level. We're also going to be updating the character sprite to basically give a visual indicator that the character is at the next level in our game. So now there are a number of steps to actually create these blob asset stores. 
I'm just going to go ahead and read off the steps right here and we will be going over each of those in the tutorial section of the video. So the first thing we need to do is declare the structure of the blob asset as a struct. Uh, next is we're going to be creating a blob builder object from the blob builder object we can call the construct root method passing in the type of the struct of the asset structure that we're going to be defining. Uh, next we'll initialize the primitive values defined at the root level of the asset. After that, we'll actually allocate memory for the arrays, structs, and blob string instances at the root. The thing with blob assets is we basically need to be very specific for how much memory we're going to be allocating. And that's one of the reasons why we can't actually modify the data at runtime in our application. And then so if we did want to make some modifications, again, we would basically have to create a new blob asset store with the new data that we want. Uh, moving on, we'll actually go ahead and initialize the values of the arrays, structs, strings, you know, whatever kind of data that we want. And then we're going to go ahead and continue allocating memory and initializing values until we've basically fully constructed our asset. Once we have and we're all set and ready to go, we can call the create blob asset reference, which will create a reference to the blob asset in memory. And then that reference is what we're actually going to be attaching to some components in our game. And then that is how we can basically access the values in the blob asset store. And then finally, the last thing that we need to do is just dispose the blob builder object. All right, so let's see over in Unity, we'll just go ahead and take a look at the little simple scene that I have set up here. As you can see, we basically have the knight, and this is going to kind of track our experience level. Once this yellow experience bar fills all the way up, then you'll see that we'll increment to the next level. And basically the way that I have it set up is once these enemies are defeated, once we move their health all the way down to zero, it's just gonna reset their health back to full just so we can you know, continue defeating these enemies. And this sample scene is very similar to the one that I created for the change filters video that I did a few weeks back. I will leave a link to that video if you are interested in watching that. Uh, by the way, all the project files and code featured in today's tutorial video are going to be available in the description below. All right, so let's go ahead and actually implement um, this blob asset store here for this project. I know there are kind of a lot of steps and maybe some of the terminology might sound a little scary, um, but ultimately, you know, if you just kind of follow along with this video and try and implement it yourself, I think you'll kind of understand how these work. So first, we're just going to create a structure for our blob asset. This is basically the actual data that we want to store. So you see that we've just defined a public struct called level up data. It does not implement any interfaces like I component data or anything like that. This is just a pure struct. So we'll just go ahead and add some data on here. So you can see the data on here, we just basically have an integer for experience points. This is going to be the experience points required to um, level up to the next level. The fixed string 32 level name is basically going to be the string defining um, the name of the level. So at the beginning, it's the gray knight, and then we're going to advance to the black knight and then the red knight. The fixed string 32 basically means that we can have um, actually up to 29 characters in the string. There's a couple other extra hidden characters that um, are already used by the string by default. So we can use up to uh, 29 characters on this. They also have things like fixed string 64 and 128 and so on. And then finally, we just have a public entity for the knight prefab. This is basically what's going to spawn um, when we level up to basically just give our player kind of a representation and an indicator that they've leveled up in our game. Of course, this is just an easy way for me to do it because it's just a lot easier to just spawn in a new uh, entity than to do any, you know, things with the renderer or anything like that. All right, so now that we have our level up data struct created, if we wanted, we could actually create a blob asset just out of this right here. Um, however, that's not necessarily going to be extremely useful for us because we would basically just have, you know, like one element of this level up data. And kind of the advantage of using these blob assets is we can, you know, if we wanted to have, say, like an array of this data so that, you know, as the player continues leveling up throughout the game, they can reference the different levels just by using one single blob asset reference as opposed to having, you know, some sort of like lookup for multiple blob asset references for each level. So the way that we do that, we're actually going to create another struct here, which is called the level up blob asset. And on here, we're going to have a public blob array of type level up data and then here we can just call this array so this is basically going to be an array of level up data components and we're going to be creating a blob asset out of this so that you know basically in our blob asset store we can access this array and then access you know any number of elements in this array so now to actually set up the blob asset i've created this setup blob asset system um, basically we're only going to be using things inside the on start running function 
um, nothing inside the on update function, but we do have to have the on update function um, because it inherits from system base. So you'll remember once we have the blob asset data created, the next thing that we need to do is create the blob builder. So we'll just go ahead and uh, create a var blob builder here. We'll set this equal to a new blob builder. Inside the parentheses, we have to put the allocator. So we want this to be um, allocator.temp because we're just going to be using this blob builder for this one single frame and actually going to be disposing it at the end. Now, in order to automatically dispose this at the end, we can just put the using keyword in here and then this will basically automatically dispose the blob builder when we're no longer using it. Now, in some of the older syntax of C-sharp, um, we actually had to put like some brackets in here like this, and we would basically put the code that we're uh, using this blob builder in, and then it would automatically dispose it at the end. Um, but we no longer need to do that. We can just put the semicolon and just end the line here like that, and this blob builder will automatically be disposed when we're no longer using it. So the next thing that we're going to need is we're going to need to create a new variable. This is going to be the level up blob asset. So we'll set this equal to blob builder dot construct root. And inside the type brackets, we're going to go ahead and put in the uh, level up blob asset. So this is not the base blob data, but this is the blob asset. So again, that's just this data component. That's the array of the level up data here. Um, inside the parentheses, we, we don't need to put in any parameters. Um, one thing that we do need to make sure that we do is we actually need to put the ref keyword before the uh, variable declaration, as well as the assignment for the blob builder dot construct root method. And the reason we do this is because we need a reference to the actual data and not just a copy of it. And the next thing that we're going to do is actually define an array that we're going to populate with our level up data. So we can call this the level up array and we'll set this equal to blob build dot allocate in here we'll pass in the ref keyword again with the uh, level up blob asset dot array and then we need to say the length of our allocation so in this case this is just going to be three just because we have three different levels that we're going to be allocating now the next thing that we need to do is actually go ahead and populate this um, array with some data so we can just go to the level up array and as you might expect for an array we can just um, access the index at say position zero We'll set this equal to a new level up data. In here, we'll just go ahead and define the parameters. So for the first level, we'll just set experience points um, equal to 50. So we need 50 experience points to basically reach the end of this level and move on to the next level. We'll go ahead and call the level name. We'll set this equal to the gray knight. because This is just the first level here, which is what um, we're at when we start the game. Um, again, we can just end it with a semicolon here and we can go ahead and continue basically just go ahead and create the next element in the array. So this is going to be another level up data. We'll set experience points equal to 65 this time around, set the level name equal to black knight. And then on this one, we actually are going to be changing the sprite. So we'll go ahead and set the knight prefab. Uh, equal to control data dot black knight prefab, which is just a, a prefab that I basically pre stored. And then, as you can see, with the final element in the array, I've basically just populated this uh, for the red knight. So now that we actually have our blob store populated with all the data that we want, how do we actually access this from another component in our code? So I've created this other data component called player data, which of course implements the I component data interface. And then we're going to have a reference to our level up array. And so of course this is just standard data component. So we can have, you know, any number of components in addition to this one, but I'm just going to put for now, the only one that we need, which is the public blob asset reference. And then we're going to pass in the type of the level up blob asset. So the type that we're using again is this one that contains the array, not necessarily the base level up data. So we have the level up blob asset and we can just call this the level up reference. So next back to the setup blob asset system, we can just go ahead and um, get the player data component and then just go ahead and assign the blob asset reference. So now I'm just getting a reference to this player data using the get singleton method because I know that only one entity in my game is going to have this component associated with it. Um, by the way, if you do want some more information on singletons, go ahead and check out the video that I made on singletons. Of course, we'll leave a link up in the card as well as in the description below. But once we have that, we can just go ahead and say player data dot level up reference and we'll set this equal to blob builder dot create blob asset reference. And we have to pass in the type of level up blob assets. 
and then we have to put in the allocator that we want. So in this case, it's going to be allocator.persistent. So that basically just means that this data is going to be persistent throughout the lifetime of our application. And then finally, we just have to go ahead and call the set singleton method, uh, passing in the player data here, just so our player data actually has reference to that live data. So now basically this is all set up and our player has reference to this data. Um, but it isn't actually working. We're not like referencing it yet or anything. So to do that, I've set up this battle system here. Again, this is very similar to the battle system that I have um, in the change filters video that I made pretty recently. Don't necessarily pay attention to this JRPG code so much. Um, I'm just gonna be pointing out the things um, that are relevant to the actual topic of blob assets. And so you can see at the top here, I've just went ahead and created the blob asset reference of type level up blob asset, just called level up blob asset reference just so we can basically have easy access to this later on in our code um, so you'll see that I go ahead and set that again using the get singleton on the player data but we just go ahead and do the dot level up reference so we actually get a reference to the blob asset reference so you'll see here I'm getting actually a reference to the next experience data if we hover over the variable here you'll see that it's actually of the type level up data so it's not the level up blob asset type, it's the actual like base level up data, you know, the core data that we're looking for. Um, again, we can just access that off the blob asset reference doing a dot value dot array at the current level. And then you can see here that we're using this next experience uh, data to go ahead and instantiate the next night prefab as well as um, check the next level's experience points and the name of the next level. And then a little bit lower, we can actually like set the UI for these types of things. All right, so now we can move over to Unity and test this a little bit. So you see when we enter play mode, we can go ahead and press the different keys um, to attack and target these different enemies here. Now, when we say um, take the plant all the way down to zero, you see that our experience points increment just by a little bit here. Um, we could say continue on fighting the scorpion and then fighting the bat now. And then um, if we finish off this bird here, then we should have just enough experience points to get us up to the next level. Um, so you'll see, pay attention here, it says level one gray knight, and we are actually are the gray knight here. So if you hit this bird a couple more times, we'll actually increment to level two. So now we're the black knight, and you see that the um, actual renderer changes here over to the black knight. So then we can basically just you know continue um, hitting these monsters all the way down to zero. And then once we reach the next level, then it's going to make us the level three red knight. And then so you'll see here um, that now we have this, this red knight here. And then we can go ahead and just kind of attack all these guys. And because level three is the max level, I basically just programmed it to fill up the experience points and then not do anything after that. So anyways, that's basically most of what you need to know to use blob assets. Again, basically the point of blob assets is to have some immutable data that you may need to reference from different places in your code. So again, this is data that you're not going to be changing throughout the lifetime of your application, but this is data that you'll um, you know, always want to be referencing throughout the lifetime of your application. And of course you can reference this data from as many components as you do need to. And of course, you know, you can get wild with it and maybe different entities um, reference different blob assets, even though they're the same type of blob assets, um, but you can kind of have maybe like different groups or categories of these blob assets that maybe you wanted to reference different ones for different entities for some type of reason. But again, I do encourage you to go download the project files or take a look at the sample code that I have created for this little project here. It may seem a little bit confusing, like there's a bunch of steps that you need to kind of set up. But it's one of those things where it's like once you have it set up, you can kind of understand how it works pretty easily and you can see how it can apply in a bunch of different scenarios. So anyways, I hope you did find today's video helpful. Again, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button, if you did learn something. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's Entity Component System and their data-oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev discord.